I'm delighted to be here today and uh, today as many of you may know is World Mental Health Day so it's very apt that we're having a discussion about mental health <laughs> today. Um, so we at Melbourne Brown Lansdowne conducted two research studies on the topic of public attitudes to mental health and mental ill health on behalf of Sea Change. And Sea Change, for those of you who don't know them, are um, a group of over 60 partner organisations working together to reduce the stigma associated with um, mental ill health. So when we did the baseline study two years ago, um, we helped Sea Change identify uh, particular vulnerable groups and identifying these vulner vulnerable groups, such as farmers, um, young men, um, those, in, um, those in the workplace, um, help them define and provide direction for their campaign. So I'll just show you a very, um, a very brief overview of the campaign. So Sea Change have worked in the last two years across all of these areas, having various initiatives in the workplace, um, specifically targeted at young people, at farmers, um, working with our other partner organisations in the arts online, there was a radio campaign. So lots has been going on. So um, now in 2012, um, the time was ripe really, after two years of this campaign, to conduct um, a post-campaign study of public attitudes, really to do a temperature check and see where attitudes are um, um, two years on when it comes to mental um, health and mental ill health. So what, so what did we do? So we at Melbourne Brown Lansdowne, we conducted face-to-face -face interviews um, in people's own homes in May and June 2012. We talked to a nationally representative sample of the population and that was um, with over a thousand um, adults aged 18 plus, so a very large robust base size covering all regions, all demographics, young people, um, older people, all around the country and as I said it's a post campaign study so what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk you through some of the key findings I'll highlight some of the changes um, that have emerged and just to say up front I've done quite a few studies on attitudes to mental health for various organizations and we have seen that attitudes tend to change very slowly over time but in the, this two-year period we have seen changes some of them good some of them bad but I think it, what it shows is that attitudes are in flux people are um, um, re-evaluating um, deeply entrenched views. So things are, are changing and that's a really good thing even if some are up and some are down. So the first area we'll look at is levels of experience of mental health problems. And um, if you look at this graph on the right, you'll see that 15% of our 1,000 odd people said that they had personal experience of mental health problems, with 41% saying that they've experienced among their family or that they've cared for somebody uh, with a mental health problem. And then we have 8% who uh, work with people um, in a professional capacity. So what's interesting is that these figures have changed. Uh, personal experience is up from 7%, so it's almost doubled. Family carer experience is up from 29%. And in fact, two years ago, when we talked about the results, we felt that the levels of reported experience seemed very low. They didn't seem very realistic or true to life. And we felt that it was quite possible that the low level of reported experience was in fact due to stigma. So um, we think there are a couple of things behind this increased level of reported experience, um, and one of them is perhaps um, a greater amount of comfort in admitting um, that you have a problem, and potentially also the um, current economic situation, and I will touch on that um, shortly. But what, what is interesting to note is that still we have um, about four in 10 of the public who have absolutely no experience of mental health. And we do consistently find that those with experience are much more positive, they have more sympathetic views towards others and more sympathetic views towards the issues. Um, so bear, just to bear in mind that four in 10 of our sample in fact have no experience, so that will color their views and perhaps make them a little bit more negative than they would otherwise be. So let's just focus on a couple of the key demographic groups that are, that are of interest. First of all, young males. We all know they're a very vulnerable group and they have a very high level of suicide in Ireland. Um, last time in 2010, we had 6% of young males saying that they had personal experience of mental health problems. This has jumped up very slightly to 9%, but we would still feel that this is maybe a little bit off the, the true mark. And for any of you who have heard of the My World survey that was published 
published um, in the last week by Headstrong, you'll see that there's quite, quite a number of very frightening statistics there in terms of how uh, young people are managing with their mental health. Um, farmers, uh, this is a really interesting group, um, and three, only 3% um, last time in 2010 said that they had personal experience of mental health problems, and this really stood out, and this prompted Sea Change to um, open a discussion with the Irish Farmers Association and talk to them about um, how their, their farmers were. And farmers lead a very isolated life, and the Irish Farmers Association felt that that figure didn't ring true with them. And you can see now that this is up at 15%, which we would feel is certainly closer to uh, the truer figure. And um, the sea change have been very active with the farming community and have got a great response travelling around the country um, talking at um, Irish Farmer Association meetings. Uh, 45 to 54 year olds as well. But their level of personal experience kind of stands out as well. 21% uh, um, now say that they have personal experience, and this is up quite a bit um, on last time, so up from 8%. So focusing still um, on, on personal experience, I suppose any research that, that we do can't be divorced from the current economic climate and for all of our clients, um, the recession inevitably comes into the conversation. So we thought, okay, uh, let's check in with our, um, with our sample here and see how they're getting on. And what we found was 22% um, say that they have a good or some margin of comfort in terms of their own economic situation. We have quite a chunky proportion, 45%, saying that they're getting by, so doing okay. And we have a significant third, 34%, saying that they have some or a severe level of economic strain, so really struggling. So what's really interesting is to see that um, if you are under, the more strain you are under in terms of your economic situation, the more likely you are to uh, um, have personal experience of mental health problems. So if you look here at the, the big red circle there, 24% of those who are under some or severe economic strain um, have personal experience of mental health problems. And this is just 8% for those who are fairly comfortable. So this is a, ver a very important finding for sea change because now they know that this is a new target, that they need to focus their attention on those who are unemployed, those who are really struggling, finding it difficult to cope because obviously the recession um, and unemployment bring with it anxiety, depression, etc. So um, this is a new target for the, for the activities ahead. In terms of knowledge about um, mental health problems, we know from the World Health Organization that one in four of us will experience a mental health problem at some point in our lives. So we thought it would be really interesting to test the public, if you like, and ask them, well, how common do they think mental health problems are? And what we found was that just 14% got the answer right and said one in four, um, and the vast majority of the public actually totally underestimate the true prevalence of the issue. So um, I suppose this makes sense in that mental health isn't really talked about all that much, so people find it difficult to actually uh, believe that it is as common as it is in fact. So looking at understanding of mental health problems in a, in a more general sense, a, lo a lot of these attitudes haven't actually changed very much in the last two years. So seven in 10 Irish people strongly agree that virtually anyone can develop a mental health problem. Over one in two think that mental health issues are very common, but they're not in fact well understood. Only one in five think the majority will recover. So seen as uh, a poor outlook for recovery really. In terms of various illnesses, 7 in 10 recognise the symptoms of depression, so it's seen as a more everyday concept that people can get to grips with, but less than half recognise the symptoms of schizophrenia, so that's something a little bit more unknown. Uh, one of the attitudes that's um, changed quite a bit and is really a very positive finding is that 54% uh, now say that they would know what to do to help somebody who was having um, a mental health problem. And this is up from 45% two years ago. So that's really positive <coughs> to see that people feel more confident in this area. They have um, the tools to, to, to point someone in the right direction or to offer them some support. So a very positive finding. 
Um, the workplace was one of the um, target areas identified from the baseline study as being very important to look at in terms of mental health problems because uh, there was a lot of nervousness evident about admitting to a mental health problem in the workplace or, um, or dealing with it. So um, we, Sea Change have worked in this area and we also included this in the survey. So in general terms, uh, first of all, two and three strongly agree that those with mental health problems should have the same rights as everyone else, um, which is not too bad. However, only 51% um, say this in respect of job rights. So a little bit re of reluctance, and perhaps this is more acutely felt um, in the current economic climate, that people should have the same right to a job. Now, I would say that this... Um, this uh, view has increased over the last two years, so it is people are more positively disposed to, to people having the same rights in the workplace now compared to 2010. Only 63% say that someone diagnosed with depression will go back to work within a year. Again, this has improved, so it's gone up 5% since last time. So again, moving slightly in the right direction. One third now say that they would be very comfortable working with someone from, uh, with depression. So this was only about 20% last time, so it seems really low. Um, but again, it's moved up to about a third, so moving in the right direction, moving slowly. And then again, um, um, uh, again, in the recession comes into this again. Um, a greater proportion now say that a mental health problem would have a negative effect on their job or career and also on work relationships. So there's still quite a lot of nervousness about disclosing a mental health problem in the workplace. So this is clearly one area that, that requires continued work and focus. So let's focus on stigma then. Um, uh, three, in, three in every four strongly agree that mental health should be openly discussed. So in theory, there is a willingness, there is a volition that uh, mental health should be talked about. However, when it comes to someone's own personal situation, there is still a lot of nervousness. Um, over half agree that they wouldn't want others to know. And this has increased, this worry um, has increased since 2010. One in four agree it would be hard to talk to someone with mental health problems. So again, that stigma creeping in, the negative um, perceptions, the fear of the unknown. And this is um, quite a stark finding as well. One in 10 say that they would in fact distance themselves from someone with a mental health, a health problem. And this has grown quite a bit. It was just down at 2%, so it was really quite negligible last time. It's now up at um, about 11% now. But what we have found is throughout this survey, those with direct personal experience of mental health problems have more positive views. Um, they're more sympathetic generally. Um, and this really shows that it's lack of information, poor understanding and lack of experience that, that leads to stigma. Um, in terms of stigma as well, we have found a couple of um, areas where attitudes have become more negative. Now, they are a minority view, just to stress that, but still, these are a few watch-outs, if you like, just to be aware of. 15% now say that those with mental health problems are a burden on society, and this was 9%. 22% now say they should not be given any responsibility, and again, that's up. 21% um, feel that mental health services downgrade residential areas, and this was 13%. 11% believe increased spending on mental health services is a waste of money. So although these are minority views held by a small proportion of the population, we just need to be aware that they are moving in the wrong direction, if you like, and good to be aware of this in advance of other activity down, down the line. Um, in the survey, we also focused on two specific illnesses, uh, depression and schizophrenia, and we um, showed case studies on both. And um, just to get a sense from um, people what the outlook, 
what, what outlook for recovery they believed was possible from both. And again, we've seen positive increases um, across the board in terms of outlook for recovery. For schizophrenia, for example, um, a stronger belief that someone with schizophrenia can lead an ordinary life for the future, can go back to work and can develop close relationships. For depression, again, stronger belief that those with depression can participate in family life. Next Christmas, for example, develop close relationships. So positive moves, but still um, moving from a low base, so lots of scope to keep increasing those figures. We also, again, just to illustrate the level of stigma out there, we asked the question, should someone with mental health problems have children? And we asked this for each of these five mental health problems. And we found that for eating disorder, anxiety disorder, and depression, there were reasonably good levels here that six or seven in 10 said, yes, absolutely, no reason why they can't have children. But for schizophrenia, for example, um, a very low level really, just a third believe that, that they should have children. Um, um, we've seen improvements for all of the others, but for alcoholism and schizophrenia, not so much, still quite a lot of stigma there. Uh, disclosure is a really important issue and it's the Sea Change have done a lot of work in, in terms of encouraging people to talk about mental health problems. But this survey has uh, revealed that there's even more nervousness than before. So this area is really very fraught. Um, so due to stigma, people hide. So for example, four in 10 say they would hide a mental health problem from friends. Uh, this is up from three in 10. One in four would hide from family. Six in 10 from work or school. So people really don't want to have that conversation and talk about it. Four in 10 say their family would hide from others. Three in 10 would delay seeking help for fear of others um, letting know. So that's really quite sad that the fear of other people knowing would actually make them not, not seek help. And this is kind of a, contrasted with the fact that 92% say that other people that they would actually offer support themselves to someone else. So the support is actually there, but people still um, struggle with, with, um, with uh, disclosing it. Um, I have a couple of, uh, just two charts about farmers showing um, how their attitudes are really quite different and much more negative um, compared to the average population, but I'm not going to go through that. Similarly, young males, as I said, they're a key target, um, much more negative attitudes in terms of getting help, wanting others to know, etc. Um, all of the figures are here and I can send anyone the presentation if they like. Um, but just my final slide, just to summarise the key changes there. So as I said at the beginning, some positive changes changes, some negative. Um, since the 2010 baseline study, the positive changes really are, is um, there's greater confidence among people about how, how they can help others. There's greater comfort levels interacting with those with mental health problems. There's also a more optimistic outlook for an ordinary life for those with depression and with schizophrenia. However, there's greater nervousness about disclosure of mental health problems in all settings, be it work, home, family, friends, um, and there's some evidence of increased stigma in certain areas. So overall, um, from this research, um, we would conclude that there is clear evidence of a continued need for initiatives in the workplace among vulnerable groups such as farmers, young men, and those who are struggling financially, and that information and education um, and campaigns from the likes of Sea Change are absolutely essential to continue to improve attitudes towards um, mental health and mental ill health. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.